In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve equations with the addition and multiplication principles. In order to know what steps to follow when solving an equation, it's helpful to think first about how we evaluate expressions. When we evaluate expressions, we follow the order of operations, PEMDAS, which stands for parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. Now, when solving an equation, we go the opposite way. Solving is kind of like unevaluating an expression. So to solve an equation, we need to follow the rule of opposites, which is just PEMDAS in reverse. So this time, um, we've got PEMDAS, but we start at the bottom. We start with the addition and subtraction. And then after that, we do multiplication and division. And then after that, exponents. And then after that, parentheses. In the following examples though, we're just going to focus on the addition and multiplication principles. So we're just going to need to remember to do addition and subtraction first, and then multiplication and division. We don't need to worry about exponents or parentheses in the examples that we're gonna see. Here's an example. We want to solve the equation 8x plus three equals 19. And we're going to keep in mind that to solve this, we're just going to need to follow the steps of PEMDAS in reversed. So to start off, we'll start off with addition and subtraction. So we're going to want to use addition and subtraction to, to simplify this equation a bit. We want to get the variable on one side and the constants on another side. So let's use addition and subtraction to get rid of that three, move it to the other side. We can just subtract three from both sides to cancel it out. So that way, um, the three will cancel with the negative three, uh, and there will be no constants on this side. We'll just have eight X um, equals 19 minus three. Well, 19 minus three is 16. So eight X equals 16. Now that we've separated our variable and our constant, we're ready for the next step. The next step is the multiplication and division principles. Um, so, so how can we get X alone? Uh, let's let's divide both sides by 8 to get that 8 off the X and just get X alone. So divide by 8, divide by 8, and when we do that, that will cancel out the 8 and we'll just have X on the side. X is equal to 16 over 8. Well, 16 divided by 8 is just 2. So X equals 2. And there we have it. That's our solution to our equation. We're all done. Now, although we're finished and we found the solution, it's a good practice to check that our solution is indeed right. Um, if this is indeed our solution, then it should satisfy this equation. When we plug it in for x, it should result in a true statement. If not, then we know we screwed up somewhere along the way with our steps. So let's just check it to make sure that we did everything right. So we'll plug it in, eight times x. In this case, x is two, that's our solution. So eight times two, and then plus three, equals 19. And does that check out? Well, eight plus two is 16. And then 16 plus three, does that make 19? Well, yeah, 16 plus three is 19. Great, so that's equal to 19. And we can be sure our answer is correct then. Here's another example. We want to solve the equation negative three a minus four equals eight. And to do that, we're going to use our law of opposites, which is just PEMDAS in reverse. So starting out with addition and subtraction, let's separate the variable from the constants. So on this side, we've got a variable. Well, we've also got a constant and we need to get rid of that constant. So let's, let's minus four, we can cancel it out with plus four. So plus four to both sides. And if we do that, then this minus four cancels with the plus four, and then we just have negative three a on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we have eight plus four is just 12. So we've got negative three a equals 12, great. Now we're ready to apply our multiplication and division principles, and we want to get rid of that negative three on the a, we just want a by itself. So we'll divide both sides by negative three, to cancel out that negative three, that's multiplying the a. So the negative threes will cancel out. Um, and then we've just got a on this side, a equals 12 divided by negative three. 
Um, well, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and then we've also got a negative sign, so, so put a negative on that 4, and there we go. There is our result. A is just negative 4. Again, just to make sure we've done everything right, let's plug negative 4 back into our equation and make, make sure it checks out. So negative 3 times a, a is negative 4, and then minus 4 has to come out to 8. Well, negative 3 times negative 4, uh, negative times a negative, the negatives cancel, and we have a positive. Positive 3 times 4 is so a positive 12, and that minus 4 equals 8. Is that true? Well, 12 minus 4 is 8. Yeah, so it does work out. We can be sure that our answer is correct. Here's a last example, and this one's a little bit tougher. We've got a bit more going on on each side of the equation. Um, we've got the variable appearing in two spots. We've got a whole bunch of constants appearing. Um, so let's go ahead and solve this using our law of opposites, or just PEMDAS and reverse. Um, but before we go ahead and start out with the addition and subtraction, we should, we should simplify our equation as much as we can right off the bat. So is there anything that we can combine um, to make the expression on the left hand simpler and the expression on the right hand simpler? Um, let's start off, let's actually start off with the right hand side here. So 10 minus 9, we can just compute that. 10 minus 9 is just 1. So let's replace the right hand side with 1. And then how about the left hand side? Um, well, we've got a 5 minus 9 here. So 5 minus 9, what does that make? 5 minus 9 is, ju that's just negative 4. Okay, and then how about negative 3c minus 2c? Um, well, negative 3c minus 2c is kind of like adding them but putting a negative on. So, so 3c and 2c, that makes 5c, but put the negative on it. So negative 5c. And now we've got a much simpler equation, and we're ready to go ahead and start using this law of opposites to solve that. So first of all, we're, we'll start off with our addition and subtraction. Um, we want to get c alone on one side, and right now this negative 4 um, is keeping us from that, so let's get rid of the negative 4. Let's just add 4 to both sides. So plus 4, plus 4, and result is that negative 4 plus 4 is 0, that just cancels and we get negative 5c on this side, on the left side, and on the right side we have 1 plus 4, and that is just 5. Now we can use multiplication and division to get c alone. Uh, we've got a constant, negative 5 times c, um, so in order to cancel out, we can divide by the constant. So we'll divide both sides by negative 5, divide by negative 5 on both sides, and the result, uh, negative 5 cancels, and we just have c on the left hand side, and that's equal to five divided by negative five. Um, well, five divided by just five is one, and we've got a negative sign, so, so negative one. So that's it, c is just negative one. To finish off, let's just check our solution here, make sure it actually satisfies the equation. Um, so we've got five minus three times c, c is negative one and then minus 9 minus 2 times c, uh, again c is negative 1, and that's equal to 10 minus 9. So let's simplify this. So this is 5 um, minus, well 3 times negative 1 is just negative 3, and then minus 9, and then minus 2 times negative 1 is just negative 2, and that's equal to 10 minus 9, 10 minus 9 is just 1, Let's uh, compute the left-hand side here. So, so minus minus, um, that's a double negative that cancels into just plus. So five plus three is eight. And then we have, again, minus, minus nine. And then minus negative, again, that's a double negative. So plus, so plus two. And that should come out to one. Okay, so what's eight minus nine? Well, eight minus nine is negative one. And when we add two, do we get 1? Uh, well, yeah, we sure do. Negative um, 1 plus 2 is 1. 1 equals 1. So that means our solution is correct. In the future, we'll also learn how to use the law of opposites to solve even trickier equations, which contain fractional terms.